What does change look like? If you had to create an image of it, what would it be? Artists investigate ideas like this all the time, helping us to better understand the ever-changing world around us and within us. In this visit to the National Museum of Wildlife Art, we'll see some examples of how artists visualize change through animals, meet some tiny shapeshifters, and even practice the art of transformation ourselves. J.C. Fontanibe is the artist who created this mechanical flip-art machine. His butterflies are painted in different flight positions on a series of cards. He makes the mechanism that moves the cards using parts from old Victorian clocks. A small motor causes the cards to spin and flap like a flipbook. I love the illusion of flight and the subtle whirring, flapping sound the machine makes, like the fluttering of wings. People admire butterflies not only for their graceful flight, bright colors, and striking patterns, but also for their remarkable ability to mutate. They will undergo several radical transformations throughout their lifetime, changing from squishy, crawling larvae to delicate, flying adults. Hatching from tiny eggs, caterpillars will grow, shed their skin, grow and shed their skin over and over again. By the time they're done, they will be 30,000 times bigger than when they were born. Eventually, caterpillars will prepare to enter the next phase of their life cycle, forming a chamber called a chrysalis. Within the chrysalis, the final transformation will occur, a process called metamorphosis. The caterpillar's body is completely liquefied, becoming a pale goop. From this soup of cells, a new body grows and eventually emerges as a butterfly. Sculptor Paul Walensky uses butterflies symbolically in his art to speak of transformation. His life-size horse sculpture, Pegasus, deals specifically with recovery from addiction. Covered in tiny, delicate white butterflies and moths, the ordinary horse is transformed into a winged horse, or a Pegasus. The lightness of the material and the way they are pinned allows the butterflies to flutter with the slightest breeze. Transformation is imbued into Walensky's work. Old materials become new, a horse grows wings, and a person struggling with addiction recovers and gains freedom. This small oil painting of a butterfly is by Albert Bierstadt. He was a German-American painter best known for his romantic paintings of the American Western landscape. This is the only butterfly painting of his in our collection, but it's not the only butterfly painting he ever did. When he was in his 40s and 50s, he created dozens of paintings very similar to this one. Wow. Well, it is a really charming piece. And I love how you can see all these details of, of the butterfly's anatomy, like the, you know, the head with the big compound eyes, and you know the, the thorax and the abdomen, and then, of course, the forewing and the hindwing. And it, it's really incredible to me how symmetrical it seems to be from side to side. I'm really glad you noticed the symmetry because it is a clue to how this was made. When Bierstad made these butterflies or moths, it was a magic trick of sorts that he did in his studio to entertain guests. Oh, okay, like a party trick. You could say that. When people visited his studio, he would make these small paintings really quickly, and each guest would receive one as a souvenir. Lucky them. I mean, everybody likes party favors. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't believe that. So they actually got to watch him make these small paintings for them? They did. Our curator of art, discovered a published journal written by a young Victorian woman, and in it she describes his process really well. He made two or three dabs of pigment on the paper, a quick fold, and holding it, still folded, against a pane of glass, he made two or three quick strokes on that wizard-like palette using his knife on the outside. And hey, presto, a wonderful Brazilian butterfly or moth. Even the veining on the wings complete. A pencil touch added for the antenna, the artist's autograph added to the corner, and now each of us had our own painting by Bierstadt. Wow, yeah, she took very thorough notes. <laughs> I'm curious though, do you think we could follow those instructions and actually replicate Bierstadt's magic trick? I could gather up some materials. His materials list is very old, but 
Fortunately, most of those items haven't changed much in the last 150 years. We could go outside and let's give it a try. Oh, I love that. Maybe we'll see some butterflies out there too. The Museum Sculpture Trail is a space that was recently transformed in partnership with some amazing organizations who are working to restore it with native trees, flowers, grasses, and shrubs. If you visit the museum, you can take the Greater Yellowstone Botanical Tour to learn more about these native plants. These plants were selected for their ability to attract pollinators, like butterflies. Butterflies visit flowers to feed on nectar. Tiny grains of pollen cling to their bodies and fall on other flowers as they flit about. This fertilizes the plants, allowing them to produce fruit and seeds. Ah, oh, I love it out here. And I'm so excited to paint one of these magical little wizards out here in their natural habitat. So Jane, what do we do first? Okay, the first step is always to gather your materials. The paper he mentioned was called a cartridge paper, which was common in his era as a casing for gunpowder for firearms. We don't have that paper. So I've substituted a smooth vellum for us to use today, and it's gonna work just fine. The other materials are more straightforward. We have our oil paints, uh, and I've put some down on the palette. The palette can be any hard surface. I have a piece of tempered glass that's gonna work for us. I also have palette knives, one for each of the colors we'll be using today. And I have a pencil for the signature and the antennae at the end. Um, but yeah, I think we're all set, ready to go. So first step, you take your paper and you're gonna fold it in half and make a nice crease right along the middle there. Open it back up and I'm going to clip it into my clipboard since we're outside. I don't want it to blow away. Next step is to take any color you want for your wings to get started and you're going to lay down some color. Notice I picked up the paint on the back side or the bottom side of the palette knife and I'm just going to kind of spread that where I think I want the wing to be and I'm gonna take a little bit more. Remember they have a, a fore wing and a hind wing. Put some more of that down here on this side. And then I'm going to maybe add a little bit of red. Again, pick up some paint using the back side of my palette knife. And I'm gonna make a few streaks of that red paint going through the wing. And then I'm going to maybe add a few dots of color just for some decoration along the top of the wing and maybe along the bottom of the wing there. And then I'm going to take some black, I think, and add what might be a head of the butterfly at the top. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more right on the edge of my palette knife and I'm gonna drag that down the center for where the body will be. And then the next step is to fold your paper in half press down and I'm going to take the handle of the palette knife and I'm going to use that to press some lines that could be the veining, maybe even a line that could be coming down the body for some detailing. I'm going to use my fingers in a fanning motion to give it some extra pressure to spread the paint out like that. Okay, I think we're ready to see what we've got here. Open it back up and presto, a unique butterfly or moth. He used a pencil to add the antennae at the top, head of the butterfly and a little signature in the corner. And there, that is now a finished work of art. This looks so fun. Okay, I'm gonna go get Megan and Mel and maybe we can all try making one together? Sure. Perfect, I'll see you in a sec. Okay. All right, you guys, this is so fun. Let's do it. Artists, like butterflies, are masters of transformation taking humble materials and almost magically altering them to produce something totally new. Whether the piece showcases the transformation of materials or the metamorphosis of the spirit, 
When an artist enters their creative cocoon, the results can be a stunning surprise. That art might just change those who gaze upon it. There are endless opportunities for transformation, and you are the artist.